and welcome, welcome to our Titans Reach Higher Town Hall. I want to thank everyone for participating this morning. What a wonderful crowd. Whether you're here in person or through social media, on the Irvine campus or via the live stream, thank you, thank you everyone for sharing your voice. I also want to thank the more than 50 facilitators who are leading the discussions here today. Will they all please stand and let us recognize you and thank you, all the facilitators. Yay! Thank you. Yes, that's right. Thank you for your leadership. Your collaboration is crucial as we enter the midpoint of our five-year strategic plan. Can you imagine? We are in the midpoint. It seems like yesterday we are meeting for the very first time, and now here we are more than two years into our strategic plan, and we are doing great things. Our student success team and newly hired advisors are improving integrated and mandatory advising. Remember that was goal one? Our cross-campus HIPS meeting groups are working collaboratively to achieve our HIP goals. Anybody know what goal that is? Two, right, two. Dozens of newly hired, more than dozens, lots of newly hired, high quality and diverse faculty and staff members are transforming our classrooms and our university environment. Which goal was that? Three. And many scholarships and programs are flourishing with the support of an unprecedented increase in total gift commitments. They reached their 15 million after two years. What goal is that? Four. Thank you. All of this work has led to more our first time, full-time freshman, six-year graduation rate, increasing from 51.1% to 55.7%. Yes. That's a 9% improvement over a two-year period, and retention rates are trending upward in almost every category. But we still have work to do. We need to reach higher. Our achievement gap, especially for African-American and Latino students, continues to hover around 12 to 13%, and we have a way to go to reach that 77% graduation rate of the five top Carnegie comprehensive masters, and we have to also continue strengthening our student learning outcomes to demonstrate what our students are learning. And we will get there. I know we will get there. Do I hear a commitment? Yes. yes. And so we enter the midpoint. And there are so many heroes and sheroes. That's all of you. I want to thank you for over 38,000 students you're touching, and let's make sure we reach the goals of our strategic plan, because Titans reach higher. higher. And now I turn it over to Dr. Marianne Villarreal. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, welcome to everyone. This is uh, an exciting morning. Um, I hope as you look around the room uh, and across the room that you'll see people from campus that perhaps you don't see on a daily basis, but people that represent all of our divisions, that represent our student voice, represent our campus in Irvine, which if you notice, there's a small television here and you'll, they'll be up later all throughout the day and up on the screens. Uh, but this, today is an opportunity for us to share the work, to share the progress and the impact that you have all made in moving our strategic plan forward. We have, you've read it, you've heard it, we're no longer in the process of planning. There is so much doing, and I hope today you'll share that, you'll take that back. One of the messages that I heard when I got here is that the strategic planning process started to, to 
creates some conversation across campus and you did not want to lose that. You wanted to know what was happening across campus. And so today's town hall is that moment in which you, you hear new ideas, you share ideas, you build new partnerships, you think about collaboration, and so that when you leave here, we know that we are moving towards marking the success of our strategic plan. I want to share with you this morning just some few details uh, about how this morning is scheduled to go. I know everything is subject to change, but let me tell you some of the ideas that we had when we put this together. Immediately following my departure off this stage, I'm going to ask all the facilitators to, to turn their attention to the tables. They all have some lead questions, but all of these facilitators also know their work so well. And so they'll be leading conversations in the student success teams, in our Titan Pride and our high impact practices. And I have to say that all weekend long, all I heard in my head was, is all about them hips, them hips. So I'm so glad <laughs> that today has passed and maybe that song will go away. We'll, we'll cue you to wrap up those conversations. I'm asked, uh, and then we'll follow that with a 10 minute break. Please help yourselves during that 10 minute break. We're also gonna run a fun poll texting. There are instructions on your table that will tell you how to access that poll texting site. It'll also be up on the screen once we get there. And then after that 10 minute break, you've had a chance to, to talk to each other. We're gonna have a table that's moderated by some panelists this, or excuse me, a, a, a yeah some panelists this morning that will give you some reporting out on what they heard from all the facilitators that happened this morning. And I wanna introduce them to you now so that as we start the day, we can just uh, move through our morning uh, and capture as many voices and, and into the Q&A as possible. This morning, we have moderating that panel, Dr. Bonnie Williams. Dr. Bonnie Williams is new to campus, and, and when I asked her to do this, said absolutely, and so I thank her for that. She's an assistant professor of English, comparative literature, and linguistics. When introduced to the campus community and asked about her classes, she gave an example of what happens in our classrooms that can touch the lives of others. Quote, in my class for future English teachers, I express that these students can learn the language without eradicating their home language. For those of us who have witnessed generations of native tongues erased from our daily lives, Dr. Williams' teaching and research restores agency and cultivates confidence. And I'm sure that in her summary remarks today, she will keep our confidence running high on our strategic planning process, uh, our strategic planning doing. Representing the high impact practices will be Dr. Sherry McMahon. Dr. Sherry McMahon, though on campus since 2000, is in her first year as deputy provost. And I have to say that I couldn't pass up this story that as part of her hazing into senior leadership, she and several members of the campus had the privilege of reliving college life at the 2014 High Impact Practices and Student Success Institute, where they worked together to draft a framework of HIPS relevant to our community, and stayed in the campus dorms to solidify their hip experience. Our third, moder our third panelist is Dr. Vijay Pendakur. He also joined us this fall in 2014. The addition of Dr. Pendakur was one more building block towards ensuring that we could build working bridges across all divisions on campus. In 2014, he spoke to cross-collaboration as a process of creating, quote, thick lattices of interconnectivity across the institution, end quote. And I think the student success teams are part of and a huge example of that interconnectivity. Our next moderator is Mr. Harpreet Bath, ASI President, Business Administration 2015. Mr. Bath represents the student voice with passion, integrity, and political astuteness that never ceases to amaze me when I hear him speak. Shortly after the election, when asked what inspired him, he said it was his brother, quote, his dedication, work ethic, and overall love and kindness for humanity are things that I honor and respect, end quote. As Mr. Bath certainly inspires that collective response when he speaks on behalf of Cal State Fullerton. 
And our, our final panelist today will be Mr. Robert Flores, Assistant Dean at the Irvine campus. Mr. Flores has served as Assistant Dean for over 12 years, and in that role has coordinated programs with faculty, staff, students, and administration with the aim of enriching the academic environment and enhancing student development. And he's been a leader in working towards the implementation of the strategic plan with Dean Cooper at the Irvine campus. So please help me welcome, I mean, thank them in advance for their uh, willingness to be impromptu, take your words, and report back this later this morning. So thank you all. We'll now turn over to the table discussions. We're going to have people roaming, and if you have questions, please let us know. Um, facilitators, uh, it's all yours. I believe at this point, right, we have already had a fantastic conversation at our table. Uh, I want to remind you all that we are, for all of you really cool and hip individuals out in the room, which I'm guessing is the, the majority of, of folks here, uh, a reminder that we are, we do have a hashtag going on, so you can tweet at Titans Reach, hashtag Titans Reach Higher. So please uh, continue to do that. All right, so by way of introduction, my name is Enoch and I serve as your coordinator for the Titan Dreamers Resource Center, first center um, in the CSU system designed to serve undocumented students. On your screens and on your tables, you have these, these instructions. We're gonna go into a really quick activity, asking you a couple of questions and trying to understand what was, what was discussed at each of the individual tables. So in front of you, if you have a smart, smart device, a smartphone, an iPad, a computer on you, if you can please go to srs.campuslabs.com. It will be really important for you to do so so that we're able to go on with the activity. All right, we're gonna go into the first question, which reads, what does the acronym HIPS stand for? A, a number that, a reminder that they don't lie, health insurance plan for students, hobbies, interests, pastimes, and sports, highly intelligent professors and students, which are all in the room right now, and, or high impact practices. We know this answer, right? Pretty simple, we just spent the entire morning talking about this, right? It should be no surprise to any of us as to what this means. Right? I should be seeing a lot of heads nodding right now in agreement. Um, and the response to this is high impact practices. And I believe all of you in this room got that correct. So thank you all for, for paying attention and, and getting that one correct. A big round of applause for all of you. We'll go on to the second question, which reads, what is not an example of Titan pride? A. Orange County's 11th largest employer. B, number four for bachelor's degrees awarded to underrepresented students. C, cheering for the Pepperdine baseball team tomorrow. Or D, wearing Titan colors on Titan Tuesday. Awesome. So for a little personal story on this one, I was a little bit torn, but not so much torn because as many of you in the room know, for those of you that do know me, I am a very proud Titan alum. I bleed blue and orange and white, graduated a couple of years ago with my bachelor's degree. Um, but I have extended family that plays baseball for, for Pepperdine. Um, but whenever those situations arise that I have to cheer for one or the other, I always, uh, I always go for, for Fullerton, for the Titans, because this is where I came, this is where I'm employed, and I'm very, very proud to be on this campus. So for those of you that got um, cheering for the, for the Pepperdine baseball team tomorrow, you are absolutely correct. We do not want to cheer for the Pepperdine baseball team. That is not uh, an example of Titan pride. So a big round of applause for all of you once again for getting that correct. All right, and the third question. How many student success teams are on our campus today? We have A, 38,000, B, 10, C, 6, or D, 5?
All right, so for this question, on our campus, we have 10 student success teams. So round of applause for all of you who got this correct. And for those of you that participated as well. And then we'll go into our final question. Um, and I'm going to assess how good we are at following instructions on this one. Um, please, type, please type in two words that best describe your experience in your table discussions today. So for this one, you don't need to type the or an or any words like that. Just use two specific words about how your discussions went in today. So think of the conversations you just had, the great people you just met at your table, the awesome ideas flowing out of everyone's mind, and see what you can provide us with right now during this part of the activity. All right, we're gonna go ahead and display the results here. Pretty awesome stuff, right? A couple of things that we have up there. Titan Pride, student, informative, enlightening, thoughtful, collaborative, collaboration focused, eye-opening, engaged, diverse, right? These are all really great things to have come out of our conversations this morning. Um, really great to know, really, really interesting to see where you stand, where your colleagues stand, what it is that you got out of this conversation, right? Um, so thank you all for participating in this activity. My, again, my name is Enoch. If you like me, you can leave great feedback for me. Again, for Enoch, if you didn't like me, my name is Mark. Um, so thank you all again for, for your participation. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and give it off to Dr. Uh, Marianne Vier or not to Marianne, but to someone else. Can we give Anok a round of applause? Great job, great job. We're gonna have about two minutes. We're inviting the panel uh, up to the stage, so if you need to get something to drink, now would be the time to do it. Okay, welcome back. We're gonna begin. As mentioned earlier, I don't wanna go shh, that's what I do in my classroom. Shh. It always seems to work. As mentioned earlier, my name is Dr. Bonnie Williams. I'm an assistant professor in the English Comparative Literature and Linguistics Department. We're gonna begin our panel report now, and we are going to start with Vijay Pindaker, who represents the student success teams. Thank you. All right, how's everybody doing? Hey. Yeah? I hope you had a great experience in your small groups. Um, I was able to float around the student success teams area over yonder, and uh, I picked up on many, many interesting conversations, and then had the pleasure of meeting with each of the facilitators um, in the hallway, where we spent a very intense eight and a half minutes um, debriefing. They shared out lots of stuff, I took notes, and then um, you know I was given a, a really solid 30 seconds to synthesize those notes, and uh, now I get to engage you in, in uh, uh, inspired insanity. Um, so, what uh, I think that in reflection, the the experience of trying to bring something coherent and thematic to student success teams um, for me is also reflective of of some of the challenges from the table. Right. So when we talk about the campus-based success teams, we are in a situation where each college has its own nuances, its own challenges, its own opportunities. Um, and the, the language success teams really indicates almost like a false uniformity, right? Oh yeah, we've, we've, got, we've got a team in every college, we're good to go, you know? It's, it's, it's more complicated than that. It's a huge accomplishment that we have the teams. But now we have to live in this, in this funky harmony, right? Where we figure out how we can all move the needle on joint goals for Cal State Fullerton while looking at very different challenges college per college. So, um, I have a, I'm timing myself here because I've been told we have to be very strict on time management. So uh, in light of trying to bring something uniform to something that is inherently different, uh, what I heard my colleagues describe were a variety of challenges and opportunities, and that's sort of the framework I gave them for sharing out. Let's talk about what some of the challenges are and what some of the opportunities are. Um, many of the colleges reported out feeling challenged by very different success patterns and forms of engagement between first-time, full-time freshman students and transfer students. 
And a, a lot of the tools that we've been onboarding early on to help the success teams think about student success are, appear to be more effective with our first time full-time freshmen, right? And so if we want to do right by our transfer students, and we are such a major recipient of transfer students at this institution, right, we have to figure out how we can shape our student success methodology and intervention practices to actually meet the needs of transfer students. And that means that some of our colleges are looking at um, finding a way to get to 100% advisement for transfer students. They, they're not there yet, but they're thinking about ways to do that, uh, all the way from mandating it to being really creative about how they incentivize or cajole or um, lure students into advising. Um, in addition, another theme that seemed to emerge was this notion of, of the gap. For several of our colleges, um, they noticed that they've had some pretty exciting outcomes in first to second year persistent rate, persistence rates. Um, our colleagues from ECS, uh, Engineering and Computer Science, actually shared that they were able to move their first to second year persistence rates for first, for first time full-time freshmen by 30%. They were able to, uh, to see a 30% increase in first to second year persistence rates, which is pretty impressive, right? But when they think, now, now when they think about how to, how to keep that momentum for students as they progress from sophomore to junior year, uh, it, the challenges become more complex. And so they're thinking about beyond the first year. And then we're also thinking about closing the achievement gap, which President Garcia said right at the start of our time together today is a major, major push for the institution. Well, for some of our colleges, uh, colleagues reported out that closing the achievement gap um, uh, looks to be uh, a big project because they're experiencing even greater gaps than our institutional average gap. So for, an in a, for example, in, in engineering and computer science, there's a big gap between um, some of our students of color, uh, student of color groups and, and their white peers. And so when we have to think about some enterprise-wide solutions that work at the whole college level and zero in with some really identity-focused and identity-conscious ret retention mechanisms for different groups that carry identities that are part of their, the way they experience Cal State Fullerton. Um, a couple of innovative approaches to dealing with, uh, with a variety of challenges the colleges are facing appear to be uh, the design and onboarding of new courses for first year students, uh, both in HSS and in Mihalo. It looks like uh, our colleagues are thinking about ways to actually teach students how to navigate systems. How, uh, courses for first year students that actually impart a greater level of social capital to them that can help them be successful in their experience here at Cal State Fullerton. Now the social capital course in Mahilla is going to look different than the social capital course in HSS because we have uh, disciplinary differences and differences in terms of what students want to do with their degrees after their time at Cal State Fullerton. So the exciting thing is that we're seeing some similarities of strategy but there'll be differences in implementation which is exactly what we want. Uh, we want to give you the freedom to innovate differently in your, in your various college ecosystems. Um, finally, I was walking back into the room and talking with our colleagues from grad studies about some of the uh, very unique challenges they face in grad studies. And I think actually some of this carries over into the College of Education as well. When, you're, when you only have grad students and you have a success team, it, 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 you face, you know, unique complications in that process. In College of Education, they are thinking about opportunities for early intervention. How do they get access to the right undergrads at the right time in their journey so that they think about the College of Education earlier than right before graduation when they're like, oh, this is an add-on, and now that extends their time, right, in ways that aren't as productive. Um, in grad studies, they have so much critical difference that they're trying to manage because even though we use the term grad studies, which is very homogenizing, in uh, disciplinary we've got programs that require 65 units and programs that require 35 units. And how do you think about indicators of, of student success, indicators of degree progress, when you have that much difference? So what they're doing is they're identifying success factors that are unique to grad students that can actually help them develop a strategic approach to um, persistence in graduation and grad programs. And that's my timer. Thank you very much. <laughs> We'll hear from Harpreet Bhatt. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Before I get started, I've been asked to make a public service announcement. If any of you have binged watched a House of Cards over the weekend, please do not talk about how it is. I'm still on season three. <laughs> 
And if you do not know what I'm talking about, you're really missing out. <laughs> Sign up on Netflix. You have 30 days uh, free trial, and that's more than enough. So as I get started, I actually want to start off by listing what Titan Pride is not limited to. Uh, and these are sometimes things that we associate Titan Pride with. Athletics, ASI, programming, academic college club major achievement, wearing CSUF apparel, getting good grades, graduating. And we tend to think that Titan Pride exists in these silos, which we can only experience by either going to a game, wearing a lot of gears, or just feeling good about being here. Well, you know what? Titan Pride is all of that. It exists from athletics to in our classrooms to how we feel about it, how we talk about it beyond this institution. And each one of the groups that talked and shared today talked about that aspect. It extends beyond just our students. It extends beyond our faculty, staff, administrators, and our community. You know, in fact, my brother, he works as a software engineer, and, and he never has to buy clothes because all, all, our entire closet is, is full of Titan Pride. So every time he goes out, he's either wearing a CSUF sweater, he's either wearing a CSUF shirt, and everyone, every time he's out there in the LA County, people are asking, oh, you went to Cal State Fullerton? How was it? What were you involved with? What did you do? And he gets pretty annoyed by it, but he comes back to me and he says, well, you're going to be fine after you graduate because you went to Cal State Fullerton. That is what Tide and Pride is, when it's beyond Orange County, beyond Fullerton. And you know what? Let's give it an applause for that, right? So today in, in our mini groups, we've had individuals from administration and finance, human resources and diversity inclusion, information technology, student affairs, athletics, university advancement, faculty members, staff members, student members, so from all walks of life, Cal State Fullerton, discussing what Tide and Pride is. And I'm going to go over some of the key things that came up in those discussions. Uh, some things that were talked about were mentoring, how mentoring is so important, not just for students who are coming here to get a degree and achieve their dreams, but also for our faculty and staff who might be new here and the ones who have been here for a while to share their wealth of knowledge and experience with others and get that satisfaction that you get by helping a colleague out, helping a student out, and seeing them improve and seeing them advance over the years that you're here. We also talked about how important it is. Uh, we don't always think of, of ourselves as an employer, but we are an employer. We have student employees, we have faculty, we have staff, we have an abundance of uh, people who are coming here to work and how important that can be in getting them ready for jobs and helping them improve as, as individuals, professionals, as managers, and, and through, because they, and the great thing about it is you get to see a variance of populations and get to serve them. We talked about tradition, how important it is to form traditions because traditions go beyond beyond your time here, that's something you hold key to your heart. And, and we can see the formulations of those traditions in homecoming as it keeps getting bigger and bolder and better as years go out. Uh, we're starting to see these traditions form up and we have to think about lasting ones. Also focus on specific in initiatives to enhance Titan Pride. So we have some examples like we do Titan Taco Tuesday. We talked about um, having more mentorship opportunities. We talked about this year we're going to do Tuffy Awards where we're going to uh, in a highlight Titans leaving their footprint. So graduating seniors who have uh, dedicated beyond the classroom within the Cal State Fullerton recognizing them. So forming these initiatives that specifically recognize people who have given more. Focus on um, ambassadorship. You know, becoming ambassadors. Communities and connections. So uh, again, it goes beyond just Cal State Fullerton. So making sure that we are well known and recognized beyond the community. So if people feel good, they talk good, and then they go ahead and become those ambassadors moving forward. Um, having a wide range of communications and making sure that we're not communicating, uh, you know, only within the faculty or the staff or students. There's so much overlap going on and sharing those resources and communicating together and focusing on making our campus beautiful, making sure that people, when they come here, they enjoy being here. Uh, focus on the beautification of our campus. Campus. Now, you can see I'm rushing through because I'm down to 15 seconds. Um, <laughs> collaboration is a key. Uh, it is important that we collaborate uh, uh, in all different populations that we have on this campus so we can best serve our students in our campus body. And that is all tied in pride in five minutes. <laughs> now we'll hear from Shari McMahon, who's representing HIPS. 
Great, thank you. First of all, I feel very proud to be a Titan. And second of all, I want to thank all the HIPS working groups out there. You did a fabulous job sharing all the experiences. So, what I'm going to do is, in our very limited time, share a little bit about some of those high-impact practices that we're already doing um, in our classroom and our co-curricular environment. So we first, I first identified Sherry from Natural Sciences and Mathematics. And in algebra, she does a flipped classroom. You could wave, Sherry. If I shout out your name, you give me a big wave. <laughs> Great. And she says that, that this experience makes the students feel at ease when they actually, when she comes in, to talk about it. They see an online module, then she comes in to prepare and present the information, and it's going very successful. How many students like college algebra, right? So <laughs> we've seen about a 10% improvement, right, in in the grades, in the, in the repeatability, so to speak, of classes, and it's um, overall um, a very profound impact. So very good. Thanks for your good work, Sherry. Mallory, where's Mallory? Can you give me a big wave? She, she here? She had to leave? Ah, oh, darn. Mallory's a student in chemistry. And Mallory says, I wouldn't have liked organic chemistry if it wasn't working with the other students. Supplemental instruction is a revolutionary way of learning. This is not tutoring, she says. We don't give answers, right? Questions lead to more questions, and that we're teaching those critical thinking skills, and that's what's so great about it. She says, and it's also a great way to meet other students. So in this collaborative model, we have students leading other students. In nursing, Mary Ann and Elaine, thanks for sharing your experiences. Give me a big wave, Elaine. <laughs> With your entry-level master's program, you provide opportunities for a network that are included in the classroom. So all of the students in the classroom participate in a nursing conference. They all go together. They meet the top chief uh, nursing officers from all the various hospitals. And the students come back saying, we were like, it was like the rock stars of nursing. What a great experience for them. And it's really important, we discussed, to build these experiences in the classroom. So as soon as you make those things optional, the students that would normally do that would participate, and then we lose a whole segment of the population. So we want to build HIP experiences whenever we can as part of, of the curricular or co-curricular activities. And mechanical engineering, Nina, where's the big shout out? Yay! <laughs> Talked about her team-based teaching and learning. And she's also accompanied by interim dean Jim Tully from the arts, who also does quite a bit of team-based teaching and learning in the arts. Nina's so proud because she says, we solve real-world problems. We bring together uh, multidisciplinary faculty, so faculty not only in engineering, but other sciences and other fields, and have them work with industry partners in creating to solutions. So that's a great, great opportunity for our students and something they'll always remember. And health and human development, Jenny and Kate, Ray, all right, there you are, <laughs> talked about their uh, CAS, the Child and Adolescent Studies Practicum Program. They have their students doing over 300 hours with Jumpstart, these are to assess school readiness for young kids. And um, Jenny talks about 97%, she's already done a paper on this, we're way ahead on the hips. If you could read this, she crosses over lots of categories using multiple high impact practices in their classroom setting. So thanks for those great experiences, again, ones that students will never forget. And business, JJ, give me a hand up. All right, great. Now, what's very interesting in businesses model when they do one of, one of their many high impact practices is they kind of do it like a shark tank. How many people like to watch Shark Tank? Isn't that fun? You gotta <laughs> sell that business idea. So JJ tells us about what's important for them is the students take the time to reflect on their experiences. Another quality of a high impact practice program. And what we discussed as a group is that HIPs are really about our faculty caring for our students. And if we could just create that difference, if we all cared for our students, we all left that impressionable impact on them, um, we would do a, a much better job. I wanted to share also a couple of aha moments with you. Um, Dawn shared a moment with one of the students um, in the Center for Internship and Community Engagement that um, had a phobia towards older adults. 
and their project was to work with older adults. And that's a very hard when somebody is phobia. She said that they were literally shaking in, in her room and to talk them through it. She says by Christmas time, she learned that this the student had spent the holidays with the older adults, right? And then afterwards, she even helped them try to get uh, residency in the state of California. So what a great, impactful moment. And finally, I'm going to leave with one more, which I think tells it all from a high-impact practice experience, and that's in Dr. Cannell's crisis intervention class. Christy, give me a big shout out. Students um, work in the various agencies, and in her crisis intervention class, she talks a lot about suicide and management. And she says the biggest aha moment she got from a student is when they said, you know what, I did a suicide assessment. I helped stop somebody from committing suicide. How impactful could that be? So thanks again, teams. Great job with all the high impact practices. Okay, and finally, we'll hear from Robert Flores um, at the Irvine campus. Great. Hello, everyone. Am I on? Great. So here at the Irvine campus, we actually reviewed several different areas. We talked about Titan Pride, um, High Impact Practices, and um, our student success teams. So we're happy to report that the Irvine campus is very active in high impact practices. And we had several faculty members um, review with us here in our session what they're doing in their classes for high impact practices. Um, Practical Advantage in the College of Communications offers low cost services to outside organizations. So their students are getting an opportunity to have some real life experiences and presenting project models for their businesses. And this is a capstone learning program as well. Um, our Business Writing 301 gives an opportunity for students to do collaborative assignments. Our English 303 is working on diversity and global learning initiatives with collaborating assignments as well as um, assignments that focus around real life experiences and world views. Um, our Chemistry 100 class um, focuses on undergraduate research with water pollutants. Worlds of uh, world of polymers, energy and fuels. Students are involved in actively um, doing empirical type of research and questions. And when it comes to Titan Pride, we're happy to say that we do have very strong experience here of Titan Pride, but there is work to be done. And part of that is um, having collaborations between the Fullerton and the Irvine campus. So we want to offer our students opportunities to be mentored back and forth, to offer mentoring opportunities for our students, to give to Fullerton students as well. We also want to look at new ways that we can build our communication between the campuses to promote Titan Pride. For example, we have Magic Johnson coming up this week, and we feel that this forum that we're doing right now with the town hall would be a perfect opportunity to have students here at the Irvine campus participate in that experience if we have something like this in the future. Um, we have the ability to offer a space for over 100 students who can participate in that type of um, speaker event who may not be able to get to the Fullerton campus in time for an evening type of program. Um, we also want to give students an opportunity to get involved in athletics events, so possibly doing some pre-event type of event here where students can get together, they can rally around, promote that Titan pride, and then work out some kind of bus shuttle service for Irvine students to get to the events at the Fullerton campus. Because um, what we heard from our students here is that sometimes that is a deterrent to get there in time. Um, and lastly, our student success teams. We're very happy to have our student success team here on board at the Irvine campus. Um, we had a large number of students in this focus group today, and the students reported that they are very eager to work with the student success teams, but they want to know how to access this. And I imagine this will be an issue in a lot of colleges is how are students getting the information about their student success teams, and what can the student success teams do for the students? We know as groups um, working together with other colleagues what our purpose is, but do the students really know what the SSTs are here to do and how they can access them? So getting the word out to students, helping students from the time they come in at orientation, following that group all the way through commencement, and making sure that they have the best Titan Pride experience possible. Okay, before we start our question and answer session, I have the pleasure of um, bringing together all of these presentations <laughs> in five minutes. So I'm going to start with um, the student success team and just mention some of the things that um, were discussed and that I think were important um, in terms of what the groups came up with. 
Um, one thing that stood out to me the most in terms of what was discussed um, uh, at the different tables was meeting the needs of our transfer students. That seemed to be something that was of concern for all. Um, as a faculty member, a new faculty member here, one of, some of the students that I've connected with the most are non-traditional students and um, transfer students because they understand the, the challenge that it is to be connected to the, the campus community. And so I think that that's something that was very important that's discussed and that we need to continue to focus our attention on um, and just finding ways to make sure that everyone feels involved and connected here at um, Cal State Fullerton. Also, disciplinary differences was brought up as well in terms of how we um, discuss that amongst our, in our advising and making sure that students see the connection across all of their courses. I think that's something that's also very important in showing students how every class that they take is connected to the overall goal here at Cal State Fullerton and what we expect them to achieve when they leave and um, what they should gain from their experience here. So continuing to think about the disciplinary differences but how we're all connected and how we're all meeting the goals and strategies of the university is something that we can possibly incorporate into our um, conversations with students and especially for professors in assignments that we assign in our classes. Um, Titan Pride, I had the ability, I was able to sit at that particular table and be a part of that discussion. Um, one thing that I think came up a lot was feeling good about being here, making sure that we are expressing that. Um, one thing that I think about, especially as a faculty member, is how I can incorporate my experience here at Cal State Fullerton in everything that I do, in the writing that I do, in the conferences that I present at. Um, I, just, I talked about at the table how I'm taking four students with me to a national conference this year for writing, and they're so, just seeing their excitement is so fulfilling for me. And um, branding the school and being able to represent Cal State Fullerton is an ex enormous um, responsibility for them. And they take so much pride in representing our school and actually um, talking and discussing their experiences here and representing us well. So um, again, just making sure that we're branding in every area that we're in and um, making sure that we are showing students that we're happy to be here and then letting that become a part of their attitude for um, be, being a student here at Cal State Fullerton. Um, in terms of HIPS, some things that came up for me um, in listening to the responses were inquiry-based learning or using questioning in our classrooms. Um, I think that's something that definitely inspires deep learning amongst students, but it is also, um, based on my experience, is one of the most challenging thing for, things for students here at Cal State Fullerton. So making sure that we stick to our goals and strategies and um, take risks in terms of assigning assignments that allow, that allow students to engage in critical thinking and making sure that when they are engaged with staff and um, faculty and employees on campus that we're also continuing to encourage our students to engage in critical thinking is probably one of the most strategic things that we can do here in terms of preparing them for success outside of um, Cal State Fullerton. Also, team-based teaching was brought up, um, solving real-world problems. I think that is so awesome whenever we can engage that in our classrooms and in our interactions with students. So practical application, making sure that students understand how they can use what they're learning in the real world and in the, um, the different um, practices that they experience outside of Cal State Fullerton and moving into employment and other parts of their um, academic trajectory. And then finally, the Irvine campus talked about mentorship and collaboration. Um, just making sure that all students feel that they're being mentored here, that is also something that has come up for me as a new faculty member here. Um, and just our ability to recruit diverse faculty, I think that that is making a tremendous impact, especially in my department and how um, many students that feel that they now have a voice and that they can come to me and talk to me about things that they're experiencing and knowing that they're represented, knowing that there's someone on the team that's going to make sure that their voice is heard, um, that is so important to them and, exp and expressing to them that we're here for them and, and we're here to mentor them, that's something that they're looking for. Um, there are many students that feel that they're not 
I think they feel that they're not getting that. And so just making sure that we increase our visibility in all of our departments, in all of our um, areas of study, and being there for students that um, need that kind of mentorship is key and um, one of my goals here at Cal State Fullerton. So that's all I have in terms of summary. Um, we are now going to open it up for the question and answer at this time. So do we have a moderator? Yes. So if you have a question, you can raise your hand. We have someone coming around. Wow, maybe we did a good job. I don't know that anyone. Does anyone have a question? OK, over here. Thank you. There's a question here. Thank you, and thank you, Irvine. Uh, this is, um, I'm Alejandro Gradilla. I'm the chair of Chicano and Chicano Studies, a member of the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. Um, I think one of the things that I would like to see and has been proven by what the panel has discussed today is how do we start bridging how do we start having more communication? How do we start working collaboratively so that when we say that we really want to support our students to succeed, that we figure out how to do this as a team? Because I think many of us always feel overwhelmed in our own spaces, whether we're on the student service side, whether we're on the administrative side, or we're on the faculty side. And I think our jobs get easier when we work together and I think we really have to figure out a way to encourage collaboration that doesn't focus on, well, your unit was successful at doing this, and it becomes a zero sum. So how do we begin to create a culture on campus and a vision on campus to where we have a collaborative vision and that it's not your unit gaining over my unit or those are my students, not your students? I guess, how do we bridge that? Because it is a there's tactical, practical things, but I think the larger thing is, I think we have to agree today as we leave that we have a vision to support all of our students, that all of our students get out of here in their four to five to six year time frame. Um, happy to be here, right? I mean, how do we achieve, we talk about well-being and wellness, right, as a, as, as a concept that institutions want to support, but how do we support the well-being and happiness of our students, because I have a feeling that will rub off on us and we'll be happy, except for the parking, um, <laughs> we will have a well-being. So anyway, I, I wanna say, how do we do the larger work too, right? Not just the practical bridge building, but how do we do the vision? Okay, I'll, I'll start that. Um, with high impact practices in particular, the president has just uh, approved a proposal that will go forward for the next AACNU conference. And we are putting together a team that integrates the different uh, areas. So we have student affairs administration, academic affairs, we have the library represented, and um, we'll have information technology uh, represented. And that's again to create a vision of how we structure high impact practices on this campus. So at the very top level, we're trying to make sure that that integration is developed. I'm gonna add a little something to that because I think it's really important. So as you look at our vice presidents and you look at the cabinet, you've gotta walk the talk. And if you look at the cabinet itself, you start to see each vice president working collaboratively on all the issues that are happening. So we're walking the talk. You have seen a, the vice president for student affairs chair a dean search in academic affairs that the provost has appointed. The provost is working with his individuals, his deans, to ensure that we are walking the talk. It, it is about making sure that what we say we believe in, we're doing. And so each vice president is working with those that report to them. And we have these wonderful faculty and staff working on high impact practices. And the student success teams themselves are collaborative. So what we need to do is to work together to take this collaboration into the places that we work. Because if we really we've got to make sure we do it ourselves. Um, 
I, I think one thing that I've realized over my time being a student at Cal State Fullerton, when I was uh, here in my first, second years, it was very difficult to know where the resources were, where do I go? I mean, and even talking to people, there would be sort of like, I don't know, but maybe we can access a website and see if that is possible. The way we access information today is not the same. I mean, people want things on their iPhones, on, on websites, so I think it's critical that resources are updated uh, on, on a real-time basis on all of those mediums of receiving information. That's number one, and through is through technology that all of those resources are available. Second, I think people need to know who does what and who can help out in which areas, because I I, I tend to think that students have difficulty with that, but sometimes our faculty, staff, and administrators have similar difficulties because guess what? We have 38,000 students. We're, we're a mini city. We're, we're, it, we're so big and we're rapidly evolving and changing. So I, I think it's a combination of being technologically real-time as well as people knowing which areas to focus on so it becomes a one-stop shop. And I think we've made amends with our success teams. I think our success teams are a really good example of it. Now, in each individual college, you have these teams that come from student affairs, academic affairs, faculty, students. So everyone is in one team. So that way, there's constantly information sharing and one-stop shop for information. I'm uh, Mike Perez in uh, the Department of Sociology, and also I'm the faculty athletic rep in uh, athletics. Um, I just wanted to make more of a comment. Um, you know, I've been to more town hall meetings in the last two years than I have in my 15 years on campus, like a lot of you. And not only because there's more scheduled, but I think there's a, there's a genuine excitement on campus, obviously. And, you know, putting that in perspective, what I think, what I think is going on is we're, we're in a critical uh, kind of paradigm shift on campus. And I think that the, the more clearly we recognize the, the moment we're in and seize the moment, uh, we, can, we can ride the momentum that we're in in more effective and efficient ways. Um, that being said, I think a main challenge, and I guess my question is, how do we, how do we uh, transcend the challenge of connecting institutional initiatives and policy and truly getting, especially faculty involved? So when I think, for instance, you know, how do we get more faculty to athletic events? Uh, we're, we're, we're getting students out to... Uh, um, athletics events on, in record-breaking number, but we could do better in terms of faculty. So going back to what President Garcia said, you know, how do we as faculty um, walk the talk more in being engaged in the campus? And I think for a lot of us, especially in humanities and social sciences, it has to do with, with uh, recognizing the, the historic moment that we're in on campus, building on the foundation that was laid before we all got here, but anytime there's a shift in not only generational shift, but like a paradigm shift, I think that's the moment in which the energy can be multiplied. And that's, you know, that's why I've been to more town halls um, in this round. So uh, it was more of a comment, but at the end of the day, um, our students can't get excited if we're not genuinely excited and turning out to not only athletic events, because I had to, you know, put in a word for athletics, but um, by and large, on, cap, on campus in general. And, um, you know, that just, I, I just had a comment mostly. Thanks. Okay, I think we have time for one more question and then we're going to have our closing remarks. And I just wanted to piggyback on a co the comment here uh, about collaboration and opportunities. I think uh, in the town hall discussions we just had, uh, maybe we could devote twice the time to those discussions with the second half being um, after we've heard the round of uh, different departments and different roles that people play, ask ourselves how could we pick one of these areas that we've never collaborated with before and work together or maybe three areas and that we spend some of that time actually coming up with something we've never done before. So using this opportunity to actually do that very collaboration at a ground roots level, <clears throat> not just higher up. Thank you very much for your questions and comments. Uh, we'll now have our closing remarks from President Garcia. Let's thank our panelists up here for a great time. Thank you. 
You know, and I want to thank everybody for coming today and also Miriam Villarreal to make sure that we're making sh we are at these town halls and engaged. So thank you for all, for all of you to be here. You know, our mission statement says, learning is preeminent at Cal State Fullerton. And we talk about that for our students. But today we role model that learning is preeminent among us. Today, we were all educators, as we always are here at Cal State Fullerton, learning from each other how to move the needle so that our students are successful, not only in graduation, but that they're learning the skills that they need in order to move on and be successful in their own lives and go out and do great things and come back and be great alumni and give back to the institution. Right, Greg? So that's one of the things that I've seen today. Your enthusiasm, your collaboration is infectious. We were all talking and engaged and focused on the prize. And the prize for us is student success not just in numbers, but in learning from the quality academic experiences that you give to our students each day. You know, a faculty member said to me once, we don't want you to be a one person, one goal person, and always talking about our diverse student body. I'm proud to stand here and say, that's my eye on the prize. That is why I am here. Because if we admit 38,000 students, it's our responsibility to do everything we can to ensure that this diverse student body goes out and represents Cal State Fullerton proudly because of the great work that each of you do. So it is about students. It is about how we work together with wonderful faculty and staff leading the way. Let's take this collaboration back to our classrooms, back to the university, back to where you work. And those that did not come today, tell them they missed out, because they missed out from learning from each and every one of you. Thank you so very much.